Empty Nest by Daniel Powell Cold Open Interior Hallway Day Harry Onions 50 Ridiculously Tall Dad Bod Trudges down the stairs in a waist-length pink dressing gown, muttering as drum and bass music thumps loudly from outside. Exterior Front Garden Day Two teenagers sit on Harry's wall, kissing as the music blares. Harry flings the door open, picks up the milk from his doorstep, and marches towards them. His dressing gown falls open, leaving the cord trailing and revealing his Superman undies. Oi! Oi, Morris! No reaction. Harry waves his arms like a flabby big bird. Oi! Don Juan de Knobhead! The teenagers stop and stare. The music continues. Shut the shit off. They turn off the music, continuing to stare. The boy, Morris, to his mom, M-Dog, to his mates, sniggers. Nice pants, Mr. L. Shut up, Morris, you tit. The girl sniggers and looks at Morris, who looks down, embarrassed. Now listen to me, you little turd. It's 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I don't need to see you two turnips in flagrante on my wall whilst I'm knocking the top off my dippy egg. Got it? Piss off and go fornicate in your own bloody garden before I tell your mum about these special cigarettes of yours. The teenagers giggle and pass a note between themselves. What's that? What are you doing? Morris approaches Harry and pats him on the back. Nothing. Sorry, Mr. Onions. <laughs> we'll go. Harry eyeballs the boy, miming two fingers towards his eyes and then at Morris. I'm watching you. Harry casually knocks the top off the milk, still eyeballing threateningly. He theatrically drinks the milk, but splutters as it goes down the wrong hole, before coughing violently. He composes himself and does the two-finger mime again. His dressing gown falls back open. I see everything. He turns to walk away, revealing a piece of paper on his back with the word cock written on it. The teenagers giggle. Harry turns to admonish them and trips on the dressing gown cord, falling forwards onto his face. The milk bottle shatters. The teenagers stop laughing and run. A hedgehog slowly crawls across Harry's head and laps up the milk pooling around him. For f- Music and titles. Empty nest. Interior, hallway, day. Harry is on his hands and knees under the sink, the arse of his Superman Y-fronts on show, a large S printed on the backside. Susan Onions, late 40s, could easily pass for younger, wanders in wearing an elaborate ball gown and sipping a gin. That's a great ass! hoo Harry bashes his head under the sink before standing up and rubbing it aggressively. For Christ's sake, woman, I nearly had a pissing coronary. Ah, well, there's always next time. I'm serious. A bit of wee came out. What's new? Been washing piss out of your knickers for 20 years. A lot of men suffer with drippage, you know. Once you've had the doc's finger in your jacksy, the whole shooting match goes to pot down there. Susan takes a big gulp of gin. Bit early for spirits, isn't it? What's with their... He motions up and down her dress with his finger. It's five o'clock somewhere and I want to feel fancy. All right, Jimmy Buffett. Steady on. You're going in the dress then, are you? Nope. Well, hurry up. I'm not being late to another funeral. I missed my mother's eulogy because of an itchy arse. No, I mean, I'm not going. Surprised, he bashes his head under the sink again. What? Why not? Don't want to. Can't make me. Well, how come I have to bloody go? Everyone expects you to go. No one will miss me. Harry hugs her from behind kisses her gently on the cheek, and whispers in her ear. That's cause you're the miserable one. Interior, kitchen, day. Harry is pacing around in his underwear with a dustpan in his hand. Shaving your plums again? 
No, I'm not shaving my plums again, you foolish old crow. Nearly lopped them out of the tree last time. He searches the cupboards. Have you seen the little brush? I've been telling you for ages to get new underpants. Very funny. The hand brush. I need to clean the broken glass up. You threw it away. We didn't need it, apparently. Just get the hoover. It's all the way upstairs. I haven't got time. Tom's picking me up at twelve. I'll use my hands and dab at the little shitty bits with a sponge. Because that you've got time for. Interior, living room, day. Harry is trying on his trousers. His hand is bandaged from picking up the glass. His foot is bandaged from standing on it. He's drinking a large coffee. Susan arrives with another gin on the go and gops at him. You're never wearing those. The last time they fit, Kurt Cobain still had a face. I wish you didn't have a face. They're just a bit snug around the gusset is all. You look like you can taste your gusset. Yeah, well, no one else has recently, have they? Keep your beaky nose out, Oliver. Sodden reed. They'll fit. Henry writhes and squirms his arse around, trying to button the trousers. He gets the button done and turns to Susan triumphantly. Ha! See? See? I told you they still fit. The button pops, flying across the room and knocking over an urn from the mantelpiece, which smashes, sending ash everywhere. Oh, shit! Nana! Nana always said you needed to lose some weight. What was it she used to call you? Fat little prick. Remind me why we kept her ashes? She was a lovely woman. She gave me Kit Kats. The dog wanders in and begins licking up the ash. Interior, kitchen, day. The phone rings. Harry, back in his undercrackers, and covered in ash, marches in and throws his trousers on the table. What? Oh, hello, mate. How early? Eleven? Yes, no, everything's fine. I'll be ready. Bollocks. Susan wanders in. She's got a fag in her mouth and another gin in her hand. Who is that? Thomas. He's coming at eleven. Better get your skates on and find bigger trousers then, eh? Fat little prick. It was endearing from Nana. You're just being mean. What if I gave you a Kit Kat? Interior. Kitchen. Later. Harry is stood over the sink, arse crack peeping from his undies, furiously scrubbing ash from his trousers. Susan enters from the living room. You're not using the sponge you use for the glass, are you? Harry turns to reveal the trousers, ripped to shreds and dripping. Maybe. Panicked, Harry tosses the trousers in the bin and makes another coffee. You'll aggravate your piles. You're aggravating my piles. Interior, bathroom, day. Harry's on the toilet, straining with sweat and tears streaming down his face. He looks at his watch. 9.41. Interior, hallway, day. Harry shuffles in wearing 80s football shorts and an ill-fitting Castrol GTX t-shirt. Susan looks him up and down as he rushes towards her. Do you have any clothes that fit? How old's that bloody t-shirt? He rushes past her, limping from the glass in his foot. Where are you? Can't stop. Need new trousers. The plums are falling out of the tree. Interior. Car. Day. Harry pulls up to a queue of traffic, a learner at the front of it. He furiously beeps his horn and shouts out of the window. Come on, for Christ's sake. It's Vauxhall Corsa, not a Sherman shitten tank. Harry continues to beep and gesture towards the car. A large tattooed man gets out of the driver's side and stops towards Harry. He motions to him to wind down his window. Er, uh, hello. Interior, car, day. Harry has a bloody nose, which squeaks as he breathes. Exterior, Supermarket car park. Day. Harry limps from the car, squeaking, but is stopped in his tracks by what looks like an invisible cattle prod up his arse. He instinctively grabs his crack. 
Oh, God. I hope that's sweat. Interior, supermarket, day. Harry waddles towards the toilets, clutching his backside. A spotty teenage security guard stops him. Got to buy something. Saws. Please, my arsehole's like a busted egg yolk. Saws, can't lie ya. You have to own it. Harry lets out a little fart before storming off, his nose squeaking as he huffs. Interior, tills, day. Harry scans the packet of wet wipes in self-service. A woman next to him looks at the wet wipes and holds her nose as Harry expels silent effluent. He smiles at her as if to say, What can he do, eh? Piles. The woman grimaces. Harry taps his pocket. No wallet. He pivots quickly, smacking his knee on a stack of baskets. Ow! Shit in baskets! Exterior, car, day. Harry is hanging out of his car with skid marks in his shorts, frantically searching for coins, throwing rubbish out into the car park. <laughs> he stands victorious, holding aloft a shiny pound coin until a rumble in the gut forces him to cover his back passage and scurry towards the shop. Interior, tills, day. Harry pushes a solitary coin into the slot, clutching wipes in one hand and his bum in the other. The coin keeps getting rejected. Harry flies into a rage and begins hitting the machine, screaming and squeaking. You absolute twatting bastard. My money's not good enough for you? The security card approaches. Saws, but you're gonna have to go. Can't shout or smack the tears. Harry bats the guard's hand away before stopping dead, a look of horror on his face as obnoxious sounds emanate from his nethers. He shit himself. Exterior, car park, day. Harry sheepishly limps into the car in his soiled shorts. He sees a policeman riding a ticket next to his car. Problem, officer? Your car, is it, sir? Yes, why? The policeman hands Harry a ticket. Eighty pounds for Lipton, sir. To be paid within ten days. What smells like shit? Interior, car, day. Harry, now wrapped in a newspaper skirt, is stuck in traffic again. He looks at his watch. Ten ten. He beeps his horn forcefully at the white van blocking the road up ahead. Out of the passenger side climbs the large tattooed man from earlier, along with an equally large driver and two friends from the back. He knocks on Harry's window. You're going to hit me again, aren't you? Interior, car, day. The car is on its roof, with Harry inside. His nose squeaks as he sighs heavily. Exterior, car, day. Harry limps around the car, tapping frantically on his phone. His phone dies. No, no, for Christ's sake, shitting thing. Harry throws the phone in a fit of rage. Off screen, a man shouts, My eye! Harry limps down the road before stopping. Too far. He limps back to the car and petulantly kicks the boot with his bad foot. As he hops around in agony, he sees Tom's old Segway has fallen out. Harry lets out a resigned, squeaky sigh. Exterior, street, day. Harry zooms down the street on the Segway, newspaper skirt blowing in the wind, and hair fashioned into a mohawk with his own sweat, to the sounds of I Need a Hero by Bonnie Tyler. Johnny Five is alive. Exterior, Harry's house, day. Harry screeches towards his front garden, abandoning the still-moving Segway, which crashes off screen. An unseen man shouting, My leg! He grabs his squeaking nose and pulls it back into place with a loud crack. The squeaking stops. The kissing teenagers are back, now with friends. Jesus, they're multiplying! As he limps down the garden path looking deranged, his newspaper skirt blows off, revealing his pasty, saggy arse. 
The teenagers laugh as Harry covers his modesty and turns to them, enraged. Get lost, you little bastards. Go on. Harry pulls a garden gnome from off screen and hurls it at them. Then another, and finally, a hedgehog. Harry drops the critter and screams in pain before pulling the spines from his hand and limping to the door, defeated. As Harry closes the door, Morris approaches unseen with a can of spray paint. Interior, living room, day. Harry walks in just in time to see the dog throw up on his shirt. The dog stares at him, sheepishly. Don't look at me. I shat myself in Tesco's. Interior hallway. Later. A knock. Then the front door opens. Tom, 23, looks like Harry, but younger and smiles more, enters. Dad, are you ready? Dad. Just a minute. What happened to the door? And why is my Segway hanging out of next door's rose bush? Tom wanders into the kitchen and sees an open bottle of gin next to Harry's Mr. Grumpy mug. I'll be in the car. If you're shitting, don't forget to open the window. Smells like a farmyard in here. Tom slams the door shut. Interior, stairs, day. Harry makes his way down the stairs in the only outfit that fits. His Miami Vice costume. Susan wanders from the living room to see him. Why, hello there, Crockett. More like tubs these days, don't you think? He jiggles his belly and they share a chuckle as they walk towards the door. Harry turns to Susan. You used to help me with all this stuff. She kisses his cheek before finishing her gin and smiling. I know. He opens the front door to reveal the hearse with the wreath over the coffin. Susan. He looks back, and she's gone. Exterior, Harry's house, day. Harry shuts the door to reveal the word twat in big red letters sprayed on the door. Morris, you little f- Hurry up, Dad. We're gonna be late. Harry takes a deep breath, scratches his arse, and limps towards the funeral car. 